Yes, earlier this week, Ben Bishop announced his retirement from the NHL after playing 11 season, seasons. Excuse me, as we take a look at his career resume, three finishes in the top three of Vesna Trophy voting. That's pretty cool. Pretty good. That's pretty great. Uh, yeah. It was an emotional announcement, though. Uh, take a listen. And the fans, it didn't last enough. You guys, my teammates. <laughs> All of them throughout the years, especially this crew here, um, is really what makes this job so special. And uh, I'm gonna miss you, but you're kind of stuck with me for now. So that's it. Thank you, guys. We're really privileged to have Ben Bishop join us now. Who's all smiles uh, for yeah, this appearance yeah. make me cry again, on huh? the show? Yeah. Listen, I was tearing up at my desk watching this. It, obviously, an emotional decision for you and an emotional thing to have to talk about. Uh, but you seem in better spirits today. You know, you think about moving forward here and still being a part of the team for the rest of the year. Um, you know, kind of, how do you feel about where you're at now? Uh, it's still kind of hitting me. Um, it feels still the same as it did a week ago obviously it's been a week full of roller coaster full of emotions but uh, i'm just excited to get to the game tonight i uh, get back with the guys and then obviously as this goes on it's going to probably feel a little bit different but as of right now it's still still hitting me what have the last couple of years been like for you ben as you've we've managed a lot of different things in this world obviously the COVID circumstance changed everybody's life and uh you know you've been dealing with this injury problem we wanted to try to get back it hasn't worked out what has that whole 18 months 24 months been like for you it's been wild and it's been hard um obviously i just went in to get a you know kind of a meniscus cleanup that turned into, you know, another knee surgery. And then after the second knee surgery is when the doctor told me that, you know, all the cartilage on the lateral side of my knee was gone. So at that point it was bone on bone. And then I was dealing with a lot of, you know, bone bruising through the rehab, uh, which made it, you know, very painful. And then kind of got it to a point this year where the bone bruising had gone away and just trying to deal with that bone on bone pain and figure out a way to play with it and seeing if I could. And then, at the end of the day, uh, every time I tried to play, you know, in a game situation, it would just, you know, swell on me and, you know, blow up. And and then last time they trained the knee, there was some more cartilage flex in the fluid, which means there's more cartilage starting to wear away. So uh, it was, you know, deci tough decision, very hard decision. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, I had to look out for the long-term health of the knee. And, you know, I got two little kids running around, so I want to be able to keep up with them. Yeah, congratulations, Bish, on a great career. Um, I'm just, you talk about the journey, the injury, um, and even despite all that, it's really hard in the moment to finally say, okay, like, that's it, I can't play anymore. Um, was it just the final injury when you went down to the American League and played and, and you felt how your knee was going to feel in a game situation? Was that enough for it to finally say, okay, you know what, as hard as it is to finally say, I'm, I'm going to step away, that was what required you to do it? It was, I, you know, I wanted to get a, another game in. I wanted to give myself another chance. I was hoping to play, you know, at least three games down there. But after the first game, talking with the doctor down there, he looked at the knee and, you know, he was saying he could probably take 60 cc's of fluid out of the knee. And he said it was only going to get worse every time I tried to play. So at that point, it kind of didn't make, you know, much sense to try to just play a couple more games if the result was going to be the same each time I went out and played. And, it was tough, uh, but, it, you know, I had some time to kind of digest that this might be the case, you know, unfortunately. But, you know, at the end of the day, I know that, you know, we did everything we possibly could to try to get back. You know, I think I've had, you know, 30 needles in my knee the last couple, oh. you know, year and a half trying to, you know, figure out a solution to try to make it work. And at the end of the day, you know, when you've tried everything you possibly could and, you know, the result still is the same as far as the swelling and, you know, more cartilage loss. Uh, you know, it was still a tough decision, but a decision that had to be made. Obviously, there's been a lot of emotions uh, over the past week after coming to this decision and the realization that it was time to step away from the game. Uh, I'll ask you this. Do you have, like, a favorite game or a favorite save or a moment that, like, that will always be tops for you? And, and if so, what is it? It's hard to say one moment. I think, you know, for most guys, it's that first NHL game and, you know, being from St. Louis and getting, you know, drafted by my home team and, you know, getting called up and getting a chance to play my first NHL game in St. Louis. That obviously was 
probably the most nervous I've ever been, but also <laughs> you know, one of the you know more special moments. And I think you know Game Seven, you know Madison Square Garden's uh, conference finals. That was a, obviously a really neat game as well. But there's been so many along the way, and it's hard to pick you know one or two. But those are definitely two that stick out. Yeah, you and know, the Winter it, Classic was really cool too. That, yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. And that, and that was a good one because you guys came back and won that game as well. That was kind of a crazy day at the Cotton Bowl when I remember looking back on that. The, the, one, that, the one that stands out more recently to me, Ben, it's a series that you guys didn't win. It was against the St. Louis Blues, and I figured because of your ties to St. Louis and the way that the thing unfolded, I mean, Game 7, double overtime, it doesn't even get to overtime without an unbelievable performance by you in that game. I know you guys end up losing that series, but what did that series mean to you? Because that was kind of a crazy back and forth. It was. Uh, it would have been a lot better if we could uh, have found a way to win that oh, game. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it was one of those games, I think, you know, if any athlete knows, you're just, you just have it that night. You're, you're, you're in it. Uh, you're in the zone, I guess is the best way to describe it. And um, yeah, that was special in front of. A, I think I made a lot of people in St. Louis happy that night. Unfortunately, uh, so <laughs> I got a lot of text messages. But yeah, I know it was a special night as well. Uh, Bish, when you when you finally step away, every athlete has a few days to reflect and, and think about their career and the people that assisted them along the way. So over the last few days, as you've done that. Where does your mind go? Coaches, teammates, family, where, where does your mind go with the people that kind of supported you through your journey? It goes everywhere. And I think that's, you know, what's made the last few days, you know, pretty special is getting these text messages from teammates that you haven't talked to in, you know, 14 years, coaches, uh, people that have helped you along the way. And that's really where the emotions start coming in when you, you know, get a text from somebody you haven't heard from in a while. And uh, obviously, whenever you think about your family and all the, you know, all the things they've done to get you into this position and know it's kind of coming to an end here and all the support they've given you throughout the years, uh, you, you get pretty emotional. So um, as, as tough as it's been, it's been, you know, enjoyable to, you know, get these text messages and hear from some of these people that, you know, not, not necessarily expecting to hear from. And that's kind of helped, you know, the healing process a little bit, uh, you know, all the people reaching out and being able to talk to them. Well, your love of the game and everyone in it uh, is very obvious. Congratulations again on a wonderful career. And, hey, you were telling us during the commercial break that you're sticking with the team all the way through. Yeah. You're going to be at the rink. So, I mean, I'm just saying, Ben on the Beat sounds like a good yeah, segment. Yeah, yeah. For HLM, you want to come on, like, once a week, Ben yeah. on the Beat can give us, you know, stars updates yeah. and tell us what's going on. I like on. that I'm idea. Just saying. That sounds good to me. I always enjoyed talking to you guys throughout the years. You guys were so good to me, and I just want to wish all you guys the best, the happy holidays, and, and thanks again for everything. All right, so we'll, that wasn't a no, so we'll call you. And, uh, well, I'm available. <laughs> I got some time. Easy. Yeah, it's either, but it, it was, it was, it, we can work on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Josh Bernstein is going to give you a call. Uh, right. Ben, thanks for the time. Yep. Happy holidays. Enjoy it with your family. Uh, you're going to get the full holiday experience, which yeah. is awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You as well.